Okay, welcome to the latest Democracy 4 developer blog video. I just did half the video and the sound didn't work. It's just typical. Uh, I am uh, Cliff Harris or Cliff Ski. I'm the, the programmer and um, designer on the game. And I'm going to talk about what we've done in the last two weeks. So we've done quite a lot, actually. Um, in that there's a big new feature that's in there that I, wanted, I, I want to talk about that I think is cool. Before I do that, I'm just going to point out I'm playing the game in dark mode um, just for fun. Um, so this is a new thing that is in, um, in that we have uh, a mission select screen. It's, it's very similar to what we had in Democracy 3. I don't see a, a, a big reason to change it. We did think about doing um, like a world map that you'd select um, individual countries on, but some countries are really small and that's, that's just going to be annoying. Um, and also this would allow us to like sort this stuff by name or, or, or whatever um, and, and makes it easier to have like multiple versions of the same country. There's a lot of reasons to stick with this. Anyway, currently there is only one uh, country in there which is the UK because that's where me and Jeff, the other programmer, are from um, which is at like our base level thing. Um, anyway, uh, we also have this screen where you customize stuff and you have the names of the uh, parties are in there now. You, you can type in whatever you want or you can just we'll be the new technocrats up against the modern family and the equality party. Who needs equality? Um, anyway, it, it, it doesn't make any difference. It's, it's just cosmetic, but we can add some more stuff here. So I'm going to uh, talk about the new stuff that's gone in. Um, this is too big and I'll explain why in a minute. It's a side effect of something cool, uh, which I will fix obviously. So social care is a new thing. Social care is a policy that is very important these days that people talk about a lot, especially in the UK. Any country that has an aging population um, has a problem with funding social care. So this is kind of like um, sort of end of life care, dementia, um, uh, help for people with dementia and other mental health problems, stuff like that. Um, it's you know where the state pays for someone to come around your house and clean your house for you or gives you money towards taxes because you have mobility problems and stuff like that. I mean, not just um, a straight off disability thing, but something more targeted towards um, the elderly. Um, and it's something that gets more expensive with a, um, a like an elderly population. Um, it also, it reduces healthcare demand because like you're basically treating people in the community rather than always taking them into hospital. Anyway, it's a new policy that's gone in. So that's gone in, spoken about that. Right, let's talk about the new thing. So I'll show you this cool new graph. So this is, um, this is the distribution of wealth before policy impact. So basically when we start the game, we randomly distribute the potential earning capabilities of all of the voters over a kind of bell curve like this. Um, this is where they all are and we can click on them and see all sorts of information about them. Um, then we calculate what their current income is after everything, after um, what's happening in the world in terms of uh, like GDP and wages and what situations are taking place, the price of food, the price of oil. All, oh my god, I can't believe that bug's back. Like literally, I've just fixed this. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, look, I'm not going to redo the video for this one bug, <laughs> which is just a formatting bug anyway. How annoying, how annoying. Because all of these had proper numbers in a minute ago, and now the only one that does, you'll notice, is the state pension. And, and therein lies an epic tale, which I could write an entire Klingon opera over, um, but I will spare you the details. Anyway, so this is a way of, of looking at the impact of your policies. Now, loads of the numbers in there at the moment are wrong. So don't think that um, the, uh, or the simulation must be bugged. No, the simulation is fine. It's just that a lot of the numbers in here are not right. The reason they're not right is it never used to matter. Uh, Democracy 3 had a much simpler simulation of this stuff. Um, whereas like at the start of the game, Democracy 3 had a flat distribution of income. So there were as many millionaires as there were people in poverty um, and everything in between, which is nonsense. Um, it was a much simpler um, uh, game, much simpler simulation. Um, this is no more complicated game, but, but underneath it's cleverer. Um, so now we have this nice distribution and now when we do this, um, we move those very same voters. So if I click on someone, 
Um, I'm currently looking at their after policy impact, in other words, their current income, and that red dot is where they came from. So a lot of people are being made worse off, you'll notice. Some people um, are being made better off. It, it, it kind of like depends where you are. Um, anyway, it's broken at the moment, typically. I cannot believe it, because I just fixed it, um, in that these numbers are all zero, except state pensions. Um, but they are actually all being calculated properly. I'm just not displaying them right. This is shameful. Anyway, so th this will tell you. This is Earl Reed, cool name Earl. Um, he's just a regular middle income dude, um, and he basically would have earned fifty five thousand nine hundred eleven pounds in a in a perfectly kind of like flat world. Um, but there's all these impacts on him that are negative and some positive, and they they push him down so he only ends up with £24,188. Um, now this isn't just tax, we're not taking half his money in tax. Um, some of these things are like situations, so like wages are, are quite low at the moment in the economy generally. So his wages are lower than they would be, so his, his income isn't 55911 Whatever we've done to make wages go down has really hurt this guy. Um, and then there's income tax, property tax, sales tax, graduate tax um, and, and airline tax. Anyway. This has all affected him and pushed his income down. It's pushed up by state housing. Maybe he uh, he lives in a state-provided house, or maybe the existence of state housing has pushed down house prices um, to benefit him. Uh, food prices are quite low, and he benefits from that. And um, he's getting a state... Why is he getting a state... Oh, yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's, it's fine, yeah. He's actually partly retired. Okay, but you can't see it because I haven't put in this thing yet. Anyway, let, let me click a few other things and get get someone more interesting. Here you go, Deborah. Deborah's more interesting. We've completely changed big parts of the simulation to make it, it more accurate. In the past, you were middle income, poor, or wealthy, and you will be a certain percentage of those because they kind of all sort of overlap. But then you'd like pick the biggest one, and that was it. And it was full of bugs. Well, not full of bugs, but it was full of anomalies, right? So, um, for example, if you were just slightly wealthy or slightly more wealthy than you were middle income, okay, you completely forgot what it was like to be middle income. Middle income concerns are not yours. That's obviously nonsense, right? Like, arguably, like my own background, I uh, would probably be poor who has become upper middle income. Um, he says modestly. Um, so um, I would still have some of the kind of uh, uh, like influences on me um, for, from remembering being poor. Um, so uh, we're trying to reflect that in this game. So um, people can be a bit of a bit of two things. So this person is fifty one percent wealthy, forty nine percent middle income. Now that either means they've recently been. Be been become better off and consider themselves wealthy now or they're only just considered wealthy they're on the borderline so they have like um because of where they are they will have various uh, uh kind of um viewpoints but we're also modeling where they are on this actual line so this person with an ink with um like a post policy income seventy four thousand two hundred and seventy nine um actually we take it from the pre-policy income um, if I'm right. So um, all of these things will affect them to different amounts. So for example, if you have um, a tax that only affects um, people who are middle income, for example, or you have some policy that only affects people on middle income, um, quite a few wealthy people will be affected too, but only a bit because they're, they're kind of in that overlap area. It's really hard to explain without drawing loads of charts, um, which I kind of have. But anyway, um, it's much more granular now, okay? So people can be in two income groups at a time at different amounts, and we can we should be able to see that if we go in here. Um, hang on, am I, am I on the right person? Uh, no, that's not how it's been been displayed. Um, anyway, we're doing that with a lot of a lot of voter groups. So this person, for example. They're 66% socialist and they're 34% capitalist. In the past, we would have said that they're 66% socialist and they have no impact whatsoever um, from stuff that affects capitalists. Um, 
this is much more granular this is much better you can see they're very liberal and a little bit conservative right so if you're like a hundred percent liberal policies that really upset conservatives you just don't care okay but that's really rare so for example i i mean this could be me but the other way around um but let's look at this person let, let's say that you're 66 percent socialist 34 percent capitalist that means you're you're a moderate socialist so um you will only be moderately impacted by stuff we do that makes socialists happy stuff that really screws with capitalists um is going to upset you a bit because you're a bit moderate and you're going to think actually that's not fair you know that's going too far for example a real left winger will be fully socialist a real libertarian is going to be fully liberal but would we are now kind of modeling um much greater granularity anyway that's one thing if i go back to this chart when this is all the numbers are right you're going to love this chart because it, it's just cool anyway the thing I was going to talk about is why state pensions an actual number and the rest aren't. They should all be they should all be numbers. That's a bug, right? Um, but what's kind of interesting is is why that is showing up. This is a completely different system within the game. That are oh, I could talk for hours about how the code has just driven me insane for the last three days. But anyway, I'll, I'll give you the quick version. Skip ahead if you're not interested in maths and programming. Okay, so um, this value here along the bottom is how wealthy you are. That goes from zero to one in Democracy 3 and Democracy 4. We set a minimum here. In the UK, it's £8,000. Here, it's £150,000. And all of the policies move you along this line, like we're moving people here. To add complexity, it's not linear anymore. It's now on a, a sort of power of two slope. That doesn't, that, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Now, the thing is, all of the policies work in percentage terms. So, for example, the state pension, if you're retired, let's keep it simple and assume you are a 100% member of the retired group. Um, for example, say the state pension boosts retired people's income by 10%. Um, well, let's say 20%. That's more, that's more reasonable, isn't it? Now, if you're on £8,000, that's going to boost you by £1,600. If you're on £100,000, that's going to boost you by um, £20,000. So what we're doing is we're giving a 20 grand pension to the rich and a £1,600 pension to the poor through the state pension. That's not how most pensions work. Uh, not how much how most like state uh, welfare benefits would work. That would be nuts. Um, they tend to work the other way around. But um, at the very least, they would be flat. So, for example, if in Democracy 3 you want to craft a policy that gives everyone who is retired the same basic income of like £10,000 or dollars or whatever, you can't do it. You can't do it. The simulation doesn't support it and the state pension in Democracy 3 doesn't do that. It moves you by a percentage and it causes anomalies. And what it does is it makes retired people who are already fairly wealthy, stupidly wealthy. And before I implemented this little fix, and I haven't even finished it, um, we went from this to a vast great big column here of the super rich um, retired people. Um, which firstly is probably not what you want um, and, and secondly it doesn't make any sense because that's not what a state pension does what a state pension tends to do is squash um, this bottom area here and push these people up so no one's t too far behind loads of policies don't have the right numbers which is why um, it, it, it's not doing that yet so I've coded a completely new parallel system of income simulation um, this morning <laughs> um, which now works in absolute numbers and it then back projects this stuff using a lot of maths in order to still squash it into the um, like exponentially kind of um, non-linear line you don't want to know it's, it was it was hard um, and i'm so stressed anyway what that means is um, we can now have policies and effects in the game that are absolute not relative and that makes a massive difference because um, there's loads of there's loads of other things like disability benefit, like all the numbers are bought, but ignore them. Um, so disability benefit as well, that, that, should, that shouldn't be a, like a percentage thing. It shouldn't be like rich disabled people could give them more money. <laughs> That's rubbish. Um, same with the winter fuel subsidy um, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so 
the simulation for kind of welfare payments, social security, whatever you want to call it, is going to be so much better in this game when I fix this stupid display bug, which is so annoying because I've worked so hard to fix that. Um, and, uh, and I get all these numbers right, and you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it anyway. I hope that makes sense. I, I, I hope my explanation makes sense. But um, the long and short of it is that we have a far greater level of clarity into what is happening in the game and how it is affecting individual people. And I think that is really important. And I think it makes the game a lot more satisfying. Um, and I love the fact that you can go through and look at that individual person. I expected to see extra income groups here, but it might just be that I'm being unlucky, although 100% middle income. Um, I thought, we'll try that one. Is that gonna work? No, there's a reason for that. I, I, I've had headaches over this. Anyway. This is a new thing in the game. It's in this screen here where you've got all this other stuff. Um, and you might prefer it in, um, oh, what am I doing? Uh, you might prefer the game to look like this. Um, and yeah, it looks like that. I've got so used to looking at dark mode now that I um, that this looks weird to me, but um, you know, depending. Um, and, and these aren't random dots, the same dot moves. I, I'm quite proud of that uh, and I'm quite pleased with it. Anyway, this is a very like tired and stressed, desperately needing a cup of coffee, Klifsky saying that this is what we've been doing the last two weeks. Um, in the next video in two weeks time, I'll, I'll have more things like a kind of like timeline of saying, this is when we're gonna go on sale. Um, there are little bugs, but like the game is quite good fun. And we wanna do this alpha thing where people who are like, look, Cliff, I know it's full of bugs. I just wanna play with it now. Um, you know, w why not, um, you know, start selling the alpha, I think. Anyway, I'll worry about that in two weeks' time. This has been such hard work. Anyway, if you like these videos and you're interested in the game, please like and subscribe. My entire feeling of, of, of value as a human being depends upon it. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks.